Welcome to the Jesus Reveal podcast, and I'm your host, Zintle Mube. I am joined again by uh, Pastor Andrew Sampson. Pastor Andrew, thank you so much for being with us, and, and welcome again. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, so today, Pastor Andrew, we're, we're in day 24, and it, we're going to look at something that... I, I guess it, it, at the face of it is, is, is a very heavy thing to talk about, but I think it's heavy, but, but necessary. And, and that is the cost of following Jesus. So the, the, the key scriptural reference here, we'll be referencing um, Matthew 8 from, from verse 18 to 22. But I think it's very important for, for everyone that's listening or watching that to, to read this in context of the various themes of or the various places in scripture, more specifically uh, Luke chapter 14 from verse 26 to, to 32, as well as um, the book of Matthew still, uh, chapter 16 from verse 21, all the way through then to, to, to verse, uh, I think, 28. Yes. Yeah, so, so Pastor Andrew, then, maybe as, as a great kickstart for us, maybe if you can then please set the scene as to, as to the, the, what's happening in, in, in these passages or this specific passage. When we read from uh, Matthew chapter 8, we see that Jesus, in this context, he has just healed a leper. Uh, next, uh, Jesus is approached by a centurion mm -hmm. who comes and asks him to heal his servant. Then he proceeds to Peter's mother's house. Yeah. Uh, Peter's mother is healed. I think mother-in-law is healed. Yes, yes. And then immediately P uh, some demons are cast out of, the, the Bible says, a multitude of people as evening sets in. Yeah. And then Jesus uh, indicates to his disciples he wants to withdraw from the crowd. He wants him to withdraw from the crowd. Yeah. It's almost like uh, he makes the decision that the crowd has had enough of his attention, had enough of uh, teaching or conversation, everything has taken place, but now he wants to have a personal and a private conversation with his disciples. Now, this seems very, very significant, because if I look at the Gospels, there's some very, very yeah. pertinent questions that Jesus posed only to his disciples. Yeah. For yeah, example, he yeah. asked them, who do men say that I am? Yes, yes, He yes. asked another question, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, why can you not stay up at least for an hour to pray? Yeah. He didn't ask the entire public and the crowd all those questions. Same. So these things that Jesus had decided, just the disciples need to be spoken to yeah. about. Yeah. And in this context, he now uh, sits down with the disciples away from the crowd. Mm. And mm. then you find the scene is now set for what's going to happen next. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Pastor Andrew. And, and I think maybe then to, to go then to, to the next thing or the next thematics that we see is, uh, as you've just well put in the sense that he's having a specific conversation with, with his disciples or his followers, those then that are, that are ardently and, and, and committedly following him and not just the crowd, as, as you've correctly put. So when looking at these and we we've covered the whole thing of, of discipleship with 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 Pastor Adrian um, in, in the previous episodes, but I just want to look at this. Just look at the context in which Jesus was operating. So obviously there were teachers of the religious law, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and and the very scribes, for example. I, I just want to understand then, uh, Pastor Andrew, that shift or the difference in in um, around the disciples following Jesus, and I, I just want us maybe to, to contrast that with following the, the religious leaders uh, of the time. What, what, what were those differences? All right. First of all, the religious leaders, uh, when they had followers, yeah. these followers would be those that uh, listened to the teachings, would be part of the sessions that they would have. Yeah. It is known, in, in according to Bible history, that these rabbis would sit down and then they would start to teach. And when people started to follow them and a person decided to be, become one of their disciples, they would take them into their home uh, and they would let the person live with them to become a follower, yeah. a disciple. Now, yeah, Jesus is openly, first of all, uh, the way he taught, it says that he spoke with authority. Yeah. If you look at the Beatitudes and yes, the other yes, teachings yes. of Jesus, they, they asked, how does this man speak with such authority? Mm. Secondly, he acted with authority. When he healed the sick and he performed miracles and, 
you know, he raised the dead and every miracle Jesus did, he did as a testimony to who he was. He's yeah. the son of the yeah. living God. Yeah. Yeah. And this they couldn't understand. So now that the issue and the, and the, and the question comes up uh, regarding following Jesus, we have to realize there's going to be more, a lot more different to how the rabbis of that day mm. had followers. Mm. Jesus is speaking about the context, especially in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 16, what's going to happen to him in the next few days, the yeah. next few weeks, yeah. and uh, what he's going to go through. And he says that the disciple is not greater than his master. Yeah. So this is the context of, of where we are right now with this conversation is the question comes up as to uh, what is the disciple of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because by principle, we all admit salvation is free, yeah. but discipleship is going to cost you. Sure. So we receive yeah. the free gift of grace, you know, uh, salvation through grace. It's God's gift given to us. But they say discipleship is a lifelong process. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment that we have to do every single day, every week, every month to yeah, walk yeah. like Jesus, to talk like Jesus, to uh, yield our hearts and minds and our bodies, yeah, you know, yeah, to yeah. submit, uh, as, as, as Paul says, you know, become like Christ. Yeah. We've got to partake in his sufferings, in his afflictions, because it's a different uh, type of disciple that Jesus, you know, has following him versus the rabbis of that time. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like then there, there is a, a, an element of, of sacrifice because my, my next question would have been that differentiation, not just to, I guess, the, the followers of, of, of religious leaders of the time, but also the, the contrast with, with following Jesus versus in terms of the disciples' lifestyle and looking at the rest of the world and, and where the world is. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we have to realize that the world is exactly in the opposite lifestyle, in the opposite goals and objectives yeah. as to what God and the kingdom of God is all about. Mm -hmm. Remember the Bible speaks about that the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And we are to live righteous. We are to be an example. We are to uh, allow our lives, you know, to be lives that reflect the grace of God, the goodness of God. The world, on the other hand, we are warned about. We are told in 1 John uh, 2 verse 15, it says the lust of the flesh, the lust of yeah. the eyes, the pride yeah. of life, yeah. you know, that is in the world. And it says that which is in the world is enmity with God. Now, if I may just put this also in the context of why Jesus was not intimate with the crowds, because the crowds were not his disciples. Oh, yeah. The crowds, yeah. crowds were not there uh, to sacrifice to follow him. Mm. They mm. oftentimes would mock him. They yeah. oftentimes would, uh, you know, rebel against his teachings and they, they, they would even make statements, you know, that yeah. would uh, conflict, you know, his purpose and his plan and his objectives of that day because they couldn't understand who this was. Yeah. And yeah. Jesus' teachings just totally amazed him. Yeah. So we are at that place right now where we are to realize what is it, does it mean when Jesus speaks to this scribe and this disciple yeah. when they approach him? Absolutely. And, and I think be, before we get into that, especially what you're saying around Jesus pulling away from, from the crowd, and, and I'm, I'm just contrasting that to uh, someone like Saul who played to the crowd in, in that the things that he did, especially in how he lost his kingdom, was really right down to him playing to the crowd and to the expectations and the appeasements of the crowd. And here we see then Jesus, instead of doing that, when he sees that there is a huge crowd following and him almost maybe getting to a place of notoriety and being well known, instead of embracing that, he pulls away. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's an interesting principle in ministry yeah. that it's, it, it's, it's always been said that you can teach and you can preach what you want to, yeah. but you can only impart who you are. So Jesus, okay. yeah, in principle, is saying to everybody and especially to his disciples, yeah, I'm bringing yeah, all this yeah. teaching and I'm bringing all this preaching out and I'm, I'm revealing, you know, all these, but I'm imparting to you who I am. Yeah, it's important yeah. for a disciple, a follower that is committed, you know, to the cause and to yeah. understand why this particular rabbi or this teacher is, uh, you know, to, to, to submit themselves and to understand, you know, he's going to impart who he is. Amen to that, Pastor Andrew. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's get into it then, the, the significance of Jesus' response, uh, uh, firstly then to, to the disciples and then um, what his response was then to, to the scribe and, and why 
Yeah, I just want to draw that just that the importance of of what he said there. All right, let's just see quickly what happens is that yeah. the scribe, as the crowd pulls away, a scribe comes out of the crowd and mm -hmm. speaks to him and says to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Yeah. Now, a scribe of that day was a very learned person, a very distinct person. Yeah. Uh, it is known in history, in, in biblical history, that scribes used to write uh, some of the decrees for kings. Yeah. They were teachers, they were editors, you know, of the law. They would actually uh, put together contracts, very, very legal contracts. Mm -hmm. They were legal people. So they had a high standing out there in the community, you know, in corporate world as well. Yeah. They understood yeah. the law. Yeah. And yeah, a scribe comes bravely out of the crowd and comes to Jesus and said, I will follow you wherever you go. So if we look at the context of what we are saying about this person, he's looking for job security, he's looking for a career, he's now yeah. seen a teacher with uh, authority who performs miracles, signs and wonders, and he thinks, if I add this to my career and my reputation, you know, oh, I'm really going to be yeah, very yeah, good uh, yeah. out there, you know, I'm going to look good. Jesus turns to him and says, makes one statement, which right there, puts him right back into his place. He says, foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Yeah. So what Jesus is saying to me, he says, I'm here on a specific mission. Uh, indirectly, he's saying, I've, I've got to do what my Father has told me to do. I've got to fulfill his purpose, his will. And if that incorporates a sacrificial life, you know, that's going to cost me everything, yeah. then that's what you've got to get yourself ready for. In, and it seems like this, the described this this describe disappears off the scene from that moment. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think when Jesus also says that, uh, Pastor Andrew, what, what I'm also thinking about is that all these other things that he's mentioning have a a resting place, mm -hmm. and and I think it, it could be in a sense Jesus saying to that scribe in that this is not your final place. This is not a place in which you should be comfortable in. Don't look at me, look at my career and think, this is it. There is a, here, it's just transitioning. It's me, as you've said, doing the work and then transitioning off doing that work. Absolutely. Yeah. Jesus reveals to him very openly, bluntly, uh, directly, yeah. that if you want to be a disciple, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, and the mission that Jesus, uh, you know, is on right now, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you very dearly. And uh, so this man is very saddened and he yeah, disappears. Yeah, off. Yeah. Then the disciple comes to him and the disciple says to him, you know, I just want to go and bury my father first, father, you know, yeah, yeah, before yeah. and then I will come and follow you. And Jesus turns around and says, let the dead bury the dead. Now, let me say something very Please interesting talk about there. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a frightening scripture. Yes. You know, used in the, in, in the wrong context, you could be, uh, you know, insulting somebody. Mm -hmm. You could be, uh, you know, seem as somebody who is not compassionate, yeah. who has no mercy, no understanding of the normal daily, uh, you know, uh, trials and tribulations that the person goes through as mm -hmm. a human being. Mm -hmm. Because how can you say to a person who's lost a loved one, let the dead, the dead bury the dead? Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. not what Jesus was saying. Yeah. What he said here was that when you have something that God has asked you to do, if you have the call of God in front of you, a mission that God has placed on your plate, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. put your priorities right and make sure that God is first in your life. Yeah. And yes, there will be time to be compassionate and there'll be time to be merciful. And yes, take care of your family. Make sure you do that. Indeed. But always make Indeed. sure that in your priority list, God comes first. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's very good and very important, Pastor Andrew, to just put it in, 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 that, in, that, uh, in that context because it's not a, a, a matter of, of choices, but it's a matter of priority and value. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, Pastor Andrew, I know well, the next question really just touches on possibly what we're going to discuss in a, 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 a later uh, uh, episode. But I think for, for the sake of this, this cost element, why must there be a, a, a cross in, in discipleship? And I think we're, yes, this, our, our main point of scripture is Matthew 8, but I think as, you, as we've said, it ties in quite well with Luke 14 and, and, and Matthew 16. So I, I think we just need to go past this, this, this point. Why must there be a cross in, in, in discipleship? Well, firstly, uh, the, the cross reference uh, that, that, that t ties in with Luke 14 
Jesus brings out exactly that to follow him and to be a disciple. He yeah. says, you've got to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Mm. And at the same uh, time, Jesus in context says that you need to count the cost. Mm. He firstly speaks about if you're going to build a tower, make sure you count the cost of yeah, that tower yeah, yeah. so that when you've laid the foundation, there will be enough resources to mm. complete the project. Then he speaks about the man going to war. He says if a king goes to war, he has to count exactly what resources he has to make sure can he win this battle or can yeah. he not win this battle. Now, uh, you know, Matthew chapter 18, Jesus brings up exactly in context the same question. Yeah. You know, he says, if you want to be my disciple, very openly and very clearly speaking to not only the disciples, yeah. but to yeah. the crowd. And everybody is aware of the, the, how the rabbi's disciples are treated, how they are followers, how they are treat, uh, trained and brought up. But yeah, Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you've got to take up your cross, deny yourself, yeah, and follow yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah. What, why is the cross so important? The cross is crucially important there because everything that Satan has done, if you look at the three years of ministry that Jesus spent in the mm -hmm. New Testament, mm -hmm. Satan tried to offer Jesus a crossless yeah, ministry. Yeah, yeah. A yeah, crossless yeah, yeah. Christianity. Mm -hmm. Today it's exactly what happens as well. Remember, first of all, that um, when, when Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness during a time of fasting, he said to him, if you are the son of God, just jump off this building. Yeah, no yeah, cross involved. Yeah, yeah. Or you will get every kingdom you want. Mm -hmm. If you are hungry, just turn these stones to bread. No cross involved. Yeah, he also... Yeah. Uh, through Peter, when Jesus described in Matthew 8 how he's going to go to the cross, how he's going to be crucified, how he's yeah, going to be killed, yeah. Peter says, no, 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 that will not happen. Jesus mm -hmm. says, get, get thee behind, behind me, Satan. Satan. Yeah. Again, Satan is offering Jesus a crossless uh, you know, mission right here. Yeah, and this yeah. is the message that Jesus brings out very clearly in discipleship. To be a disciple of Jesus, to understand what God has called you to, what God has called you for, and to complete the same walk that Jesus walked, mm. you are going to have to go through the cross. Yeah. Amen. Amen, Pastor Andrew. And I, I'm actually very... Um, I'm trying to be very disciplined in not going any further in, 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 in that particular aspect. So then I, I think then if I could wrap it up, Pastor Andrew, and, and I think we did touch on this on the sidelines, is, and I think this is a good place to, to, to stop, in that when looking at the cost of following Jesus, what is the incentive of then following Jesus. Why continue to follow Jesus? And I think this is uh, important to everyone that, that is listening and, and that is uh, um, either watching and is maybe new to the faith or, or maybe they are just going through a process of, of, of either questioning their faith and, and or it could be someone that has walked this journey with the Lord. And I think this is maybe a, a good time and a good moment to maybe stop and reflect around where we are and why we are doing what we're doing, despite the, the cost of it. I think let's be very real that, um, you know, God understands, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we are part of the Godhead family. Yeah. The Bible says we've been brought into the household of faith. Uh, the book of John so very nicely says, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we be called the sons of God, sons and daughters of God. So we are part of the God, God family right now. Yeah. And God understands our, you know, our emotions, our struggles, our trials, our tests, you know, our, our family, um, if I might say trials and tests we go through as well. So when we go, you know, and live the life of a disciple, knowing that we have all these challenges, God understands it perfectly. And the Bible says we have a high priest who has been touched with the feeling of our infirmities, and yet he overcame you know, uh, he, 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 he walked this, 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 the same road that we are walking today and he overcame and he, he, he conquered without sin. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what we have to realize is that we in the world, we're not part of the world. We are in a, uh, you know, a lifestyle. We've got to make choices based on the fact that we have come through the cross. Yeah. Uh, very interesting that in the first century, uh, before, you know, Christians were called Christians, they were called the people of the cross. 
People identified Christianity or Christians or followers of Jesus after the crucifixion as people that are different to the world. They are people of the cross. And today, the the decisions we make, the lifestyles we lead, we have to be aware that we have Jesus Christ alive within us, living within us, living through us. Paul says, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ lives through me. So my encouragement to each one of us is, you know, when we accept the cost of Christianity, the cross as being at the center of our lives, of our hearts, of our families, then God blesses us because we are prepared to be his disciples. We are trained as disciples. We make a lifelong commitment to walk and learn how to be a disciple of Jesus and grow in grace because there's rewards of, for discipleships. Yeah. Doesn't the book of Revelation say, to him who overcomes, I will give the crown of life. God blesses us, God increases us, God protects us, He preserves us, He delivers us, and God is our way maker, you know. We have a God that provides for us because the promises is that the prayer that we bring up before Him is heard, it's answered, and God will look after us in every way. And that, that is a great encouragement. And, and thank you for that, Pastor, Pastor Andrew. And I think then I will stop it right here and say thank you very much for, for being with us again. And to everyone that has been listening, I pray this has been a, a blessing to you as we, we look at the, the cost of, of following Jesus. And, and it's to what Pastor Andrew said, there is an overwhelming benefit in, in following him. So I encourage you to, to, to walk this journey with him as you walk this journey with us in, in, in the Jesus Reveal podcast. And I pray that this has been a blessing to you and God bless you as you like, uh, subscribe into our podcast channels, both on Spotify and on, on the Apple podcast, as well as on YouTube. God bless you. Mm-hmm.